In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to install OpenLink Software's multi-tier generic ODBC driver on Linux and Unix client hosts. The procedure that I'm demoing is valid on both 32-bit and 64-bit platforms. Before I begin with the actual install, I do want to point out a few things. If you're working with a 64-bit client host and you have 64-bit applications, you definitely want to use an OpenLink 64-bit ODBC driver. If you're working with a 64-bit client host and you have 32-bit applications, then you want to use OpenLink's corresponding 32-bit ODBC drivers. Once you have the generic ODBC driver installed, you can use that single driver to connect to databases hosted by any of OpenLink's supported DBMSs. That means you can use this one driver to connect to DB2, Informix, Ingress, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, Progress, and Sybase databases. If you're using one of our bridge products, then your options expand even further. However, the multi-tier generic ODBC driver is the client portion of the multi-tier product. If you want the driver to work, you have to ensure that you have the corresponding multi-tier server components installed somewhere within your network. If you don't have the multi-tier server components, then you don't want to proceed to create and test OpenLink data sources until you get those server components. That said, we can begin the actual install. To start off, you want to log into the machine that contains the OpenLink install components. If you work with a primary application and the application has a user and environment associated with it, we suggest that you log in using the user ID and set that environment before proceeding with the install that ensures that you're not going to hit any sort of permissions issues down the road when you try and use our drivers with that application. Once you've logged in, you want to CD into the directory that contains those components. All my components are stored here in this demo folder on my desktop. The location of your own files will definitely vary. I'm going to access my own install files using the terminal command line. Here you see my two install files. The first one, install.sh, is a simple text-based installation shell script. If you use FTP to transfer this file onto your own machine, make sure you use ASCII mode. The second file, oplodbc.taz, that contains the actual OpenLink generic ODBC driver. If you use FTP to move that file around, you always want to use binary mode. To kick off the actual install, you just run sh space install.sh. Let the installer run. It only takes a few seconds. At this point, your multi-tier generic ODBC driver is installed and ready for use. You probably want to create and test some OpenLink data sources. However, as I said earlier, Make sure you have our multi-tier server components installed somewhere on your network. Make sure you know the IP address or host name of the machine that contains those components and the TCP port that those components use to listen for and answer any incoming ODBC connection requests. Also, ensure that you know basic information about the target database. You need to know if it's a Postgres database or a Progress database, a Microsoft SQL Server database, or a Sybase SQL Server database. Know the database name. You probably need a database username and password, possibly a TCP port. Depending on the database's capabilities and the overall data access architecture, you may need to know some additional information as well. If you need guidance with the server side of things, you have at least two courses of action that you can take. You can locate the individual within your own organization who's responsible for server side of things and straighten out matters that way. Or you can view additional videos in our multi-tier 
ODBC Connection Series, and they can answer any questions that you would have about, about locating basic database information and installing and configuring the multi-tier server components. There are also some additional videos on the actual creation and testing of data sources. So make use of all of our videos and your own in-house resources and you should be up and connected right away. This concludes this lesson.